Welcome back guys. I'm gonna be answering the question that you guys have. What fixtures do I need when I get started with my welding table? What do you recommend, Jason? That's a pretty broad topic, but I think I can answer that for you. So you have three to choose from. A 20 piece kit, a 41 piece kit, and a 79 piece kit. But which one out of the three? For me, I would just go straight to the top and get the 79 piece kit. I understand it's the most expensive, but it's gonna give you the most opportunities and not handicap yourself. So let me show you what I mean by that. Over here, I have a really simple demonstration. We're just gonna build a really simple box and let me show you how much of these fixturing tools get used up rather quickly and why you don't wanna leave yourself short. First thing I like to do when I build a box is I'm gonna start with the fence blocks. And I automatically know I'm gonna need four of these. So four of these are gonna be gone in a hurry and I'm gonna set them up over here. One, two, three, four, something like that. Get myself a good corner to get started. And then my material's gonna get butted up against it. We're gonna make a 20 by 20 and a quarter inch box. I have my two sides. Now I need to find some way to hold these ones. So what do we have to choose from? If I put another block down, like these pins, it's not gonna position it in the right spot, right? So that's gonna give me a 21. And if I move that pin in here, that's gonna give me a 19. No matter what hole I choose, it's in the wrong spot. So I have a couple options to use when I do this. Shims and space this dimension out. Or I could use what I call the tooth block, an adjustable stop. So you can see we're gonna start gobbling up. I'm gonna need four of these. One, two, three, four. In order to hold the tooth blocks down, I'm gonna need four bolts, four pins. And each tooth block needs a washer. One, two, three, four. So I can either choose to bump my material right into the end of this tooth block, or I can choose to put a riser on it. So as you can see real fast, if I wanted to outfit my stops with risers, I could do this. So let's set this up real fast. We'll come back to that. We're just going to set everything up. So all I'm doing is setting the stop up to 20 inches. There we go. So this is the locking pin. This is the pin that keeps it from swiveling. You always want to use two pins. If I want, I can put the riser in. I can choose to leave it temporarily in there or I can bolt it. And now I'm just gonna have to set the same up on this side, put everything in the same hole. Should be set at 20. Yep, now this is gonna be the floating side also. So this one needs to be set at 20 and a quarter. So if you haven't seen these before, this is a tooth block and I can move with the pin in here an infinite adjustment. And then I have to use my tape measure to make sure that I got it in the exact spot. But if I use this washer underneath, the washer is gonna use the grid of the table and the precision of the milling machine to get that dimension for me. And I don't have to really think about it. I just have to make sure it's in the right cog, basically. So all I'm just gonna do is just jump it till I see the front of that nose hit 20 and a quarter and it lands in the right spot. Put both my pins in and there it's set. I know I'm accurate, it's dialed in, I'm using the precision of the table, it takes all the guesswork out of me. And then once I have this one set, I can just replicate it by using the scale on the side. Boom, there we go. And if you wanted to, I could confirm with the tape measure, but I'm right on the money. So now I have two stops set up accordingly. If I wanna put those in there, I can. So you can see just building a square box, how quickly we could consume fixtures. And if you have the smaller kits, you're gonna run out really fast, which means if you wanna do a bigger weld mitts, you're not gonna have enough. So let's put our parts in. So we have all these components. Now we need to hold them down and we have a couple choices. We can choose the vertical clamps. I always suggest two clamps on every tube. As you can see, this is gonna start adding up really fast. You can probably get away with one clamp on here. I just always recommend two. No such thing as too many clamps. If we want this done textbook-like. Reason why I like to use two clamps, just in case one slips or it just distributes the load a little more evenly across the tubing. Then you gotta have these guys. And me personally, I don't like the clamps on the inside. I like to have them around the outside. This one, I didn't leave myself enough room because I can't put this one in the hole. Should've gave myself two holes. And then some of these clamps have swivel bases on them. So I'm able to choose a hole that's a little closer, a little further apart and pick the hole that I want. And this allows me to adjust. I know that I'm gonna be welding that corner. So maybe I wanna move it over here. Look at all that tooling for a properly fitted and fixtured box. Look how much we have left. You know, there's enough there to still do something with it, but 
We've used a good 50% of our key players over here. 79 piece kit for me is a, the minimum to get started. If it was me, I would probably have two 79 piece kits and that's gonna allow you to really build something awesome and have all the capabilities and none of the handicaps. That's one of my biggest pet peeves is that people shortcut themselves on the fixtures and they leave themselves short. So please don't do that to yourselves. Please invest in some good tooling and enough of it. Hopefully this answers your question and I'll see you guys on the next fixturing video.